um, over the years, newspapers and broadcasts across the United States have shown um, dog attacks that have happened around the United States. And government officials have, have sorry, um, the attacks that occur in, in the dog attacks that have occurred, um, the government officials have, have, have helped to prevent these animal attacks by doing licensing laws and statutes to outlaw dog fights and leash laws. And, but over the recent years that have passed, the government has adopted a new tactic to prevent from these dog attacks that have been happening. And it's breed-specific breed legislation, which is also dog breeding banning laws. And this just this law bans specific breeds of dogs. Like in Utah, they've um, they banned the Sharpe. And there's, of course, in many states in the United States, they ban the pit bull because these dogs are known as dangerous dogs because they demonstrated some aggression over the past few years. And my prop. Um, and uh, um, dog, dog owners, um, dog owners, and organizations for animals don't really are against this law because professionals say that it's it's not their behavior of the dog; it's it's the owner. And that's why there's much controversy over if the laws should be passed or not. And my, my main claim is dog-free banning laws are unnecessary. And my first, my, my supporting points are breed banning laws fail make community safe for people or companion animals. It fails to, it, um, and my second one is breed banning laws fail to follow and, ex and be accepted. And my third supporting claim is breed banning laws fail to resolve the real problem. Um, my first supporting claim is breed banning laws fail to communicate and, first, and make, it, make community safer for people and or companion animals. Uh, the dog breed banning laws haven't improved public safety and there has been a test, an exam, and a report in the United States that Prince George's County, Maryland, where, where a tax force was formed in 2003, looked at the effectiveness of pit bull ban, and the task force con concluded that the public safety had not improved as a result of the ban, despite the fact that the country had spent more than 20, 250000 per year to round up and, dis and destroy banned dogs. And I found this in an article of, and of breed specific legislation in the U.S. And this shows that we we spend so much money on the on the law that, and it doesn't. It's supposed to improve the the public safety, but it does nothing to help us. And it's pretty pointless if it doesn't really help increase. The improvement of public safety. It also fails to stop dog attacks from occurring, and, ex and an extensive study of the effectiveness of the dog breed ban law um, was done in Spain and Great Britain. Both studies included that their dangerous animal attacks, which included pit bull bans, had no effect at all on stopping dog attacks. The Spanish study further found that the breed most responsible for bites both before and after the breed bans were those breeds not covered by it. So most of the dog brand laws don't cover the dogs that are the ones that are attacking. Most of the people, they're the ones that are seen as the most dangerous and vicious. And this was found in the, an article, Animal Legal Dentist Fund for Pitbulls. And also, in the dog bite epidemic, the number of fatal dog attacks in the U.S. has been going up, and the average was 17 in the 1980s and 1990s, and the death average has
gone up to 34 in 2010. So the average number was 17 in 1980, and it's increased by like by 30 in a decade. And this shows that there's not even an improvement in the least amount of dog fights. Um, and my second supporting claim, breed banning laws failed to be followed and accepted. Owners, they hide, they, they don't want their dogs to be taken away and euthanized, so they hide them and keep them locked up for no one to see them because they don't want to lose their, well, their dog. And, and um, an S, S, ASPCA document, or American Associated for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, um, stated that rather than giving up their beloved pets, owners are of highly regulated or banned breeds often attempt to avoid detection of their outlawed dogs by restricting outdoor exercise and socialization and forging licensing, microchipping, and proper veterinary care. So they're preventing their dogs from getting the care that they need and take and giving them the getting the license for them because if they take them out the they're they're going to be taken away by the by the animal patrol officers that come by and also outlaws are attracted to the banned dog breeds if if an outlawed breed it's pretty much announcing outlaws that this breed is the most vicious breed and dangerous breed that is very strong and powerful and people want the outlaws want to show that they're they're macho because Jennifer Siegel a dog trainer um, said that there are a num number of young people particularly male particularly under the age of 28 who find it some type of cultural element to have this type of arm jewelry pulling them around, it's the macho appearance. They want to seem more more aggressive and seem like they're more dangerous and that they're going against the law. And my third supporting claim is breed banning laws fail to resolve the real problem. You may ask what the real problem is, and Dr. Norma Guy, uh, who teaches animal behavior at the Atlantic Veterinary College in Charlatan says that banning certain breeds of dogs is a stopgap measure that doesn't address the real issue, which is people behaving irresponsibly with their dogs. So the real issue is people being irresponsible and not being able to take care of their dogs properly. And ir irresponsible dog owners aren't punished. According to Alan Beck, CSD director of the Center for the Human Animal Bond at Cooper University School of Veterinary Medicine said that dog attacks is not the breed of the dog but the owner. Beck, who served on a multidiscipline task force to study the cause of fatal dog attacks, says in every case of fatal attack initiated by the dog, the owner was socially a hermit type. They were unattached and single, singled with a vengeance. A psychopath in a mild way. The dog and its owner says Beck were living in virtual isolation. The dogs looked at kids as prey. This is pretty much saying that the owner was pretty much a solitary person that wouldn't go out outside or take his dog out to meet other people and meet dogs and be social with other dogs. So this dog started to just see others as prey, like a kid who's running around that pretty much seems like prey because it's like a small animal running away. And so my my claim once again is dog free banning laws are unnecessary and my supporting claims were that it doesn't improve it doesn't improve, improve the public safety and fails to stop mm -hmm. dog attacks and fails to be accepted by by dog owners and and that it doesn't really address it doesn't really solve the real problem which is the irresponsible dog owners